Hi girls, today we're gonna talk about the responsible woman. God. Pastor Jess here. I'm excited that you joined us for our Women Rock show today. We are going to hit up so many things, but our Women Rock show is for women, and I believe it's God's heartbeat for us. And so we're learning how to be a woman here in this world that we're living in, and we're diving into some really cool things, and we've been in Proverbs 31. So we're going to pick up today where Proverbs 31 left off last time. You can go back and watch some of the other shows and catch yourself up, but I hope you're blessed by today. We are talking about the responsible woman. Now, I know right away we're going, oh, I do not want to talk about responsibility, but really the reality of a woman is she takes on a lot of things. You know, I used to say all the time when I was getting out of my car and I had all my three kids and all of our bags of stuff and people would say, do you want any help? And I'm like, no, I got this because I'm a packing mule. Like just load me up, keep me going. And so, you know, we can do this. We can do a lot of things, but actually in Proverbs 31, when this woman is speaking to her son, um, she is talking about the responsibility of the wife and what the wife does. Now you might be sitting here listening to this and going, I'm not a wife. Like, this is not for me, I'm a single girl. Number one, you can learn now what your role will be when you become a wife. Now number two, you also need to look at it from Jesus Christ is the groom and we are the bride and he is coming back for his bride. Isn't that good news? And so we as the bride, as the church, what is he looking for in us so that we can display who he is to the world? And so looking at it from those two perspectives, let's dive into some scripture. Let's go with me to Proverbs 31, 21 through 22. And it says, she has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes and she makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. You're going, hold up. Are you kidding me? You want me to make my own bedspreads? I actually did grow up with a mom who made all of our beds and like our bedspreads. She made curtains. She was like woman of the year. I'm not that girl, but I do click and I do buy bedspreads and make sure that everybody's bed is nice and cozy for them when it's cold in the winter. And I make sure that their clothes are clean and I make sure everybody has their chonies and that we are all ready to go for the rest of the week. There's been so many times that I'm going, it's my responsibility to do all these loads of laundry because why do I live in a house full of people and I'm the only one that keeps it going, right? But guess what? That's something that is our weight. It is something that we carry. It is something we are responsible for. Now, I have an incredible husband and wonderful children that do help and they do a wonderful job helping me. But at the end of the day, I'm the one that has to swap the laundry. I'm the one that remembers, oh, I've got to make lunches for the morning, or, or I'm the one that's thinking about dinner in two nights from now. Or if we're having guests come over days from like the time that we're talking about, guess who has to think about the meal plan and what's gonna happen and, and how am I gonna clean the house that day and pick up the kids and do all the things that I need to do and then I work. And so responsibility at times can become this weight and this burden. But I believe that this woman, this Proverbs 31 woman, already walks into what she knows is at her hand. And her responsibility is taking care of her home and the people around her. Now, if we look at this from Christ and the church and we as the bride, that means we are to make sure that the people of God that are in our atmosphere are taken care of and loved and provided for. I love that. You know, I remember being a young mom and so many times um, I would like I remember I had three little kids and we were running around and those piles of laundry were getting so big. They were like mountains. And then I would do like one day, all the laundry in one day. And I remember this wise woman told me, listen, you're doing it wrong. If you could just do a load a day, you would keep up. And I was like, that is brilliant. This is so good. And then I had another friend who like never lost socks in the dryer, you know, and I'm like hating myself because I can't find the socks because I think the dryer eats socks. And so she was telling me, well, if you can just pull out that load, if you are home and fold it right then, you won't lose things as much. And I started doing that, but then I went back to work and then it became, I'm just lucky if honestly, I remember to swap it from the washing machine to the dryer. And in fact, I think right now, I should have done that. And so don't pressure yourself that you're failing. 
And I think that's what these scriptures can do is they could put this guilt on us like I'm failing as a mom, I'm failing as a wife, I'm failing as a woman in general because I don't even wrap my mind around these concepts. But this Proverbs 31 woman, it wasn't about the task. It was about the ownership of the responsibility of the task and that she knew that in her ownership that it was a worship and it was a sacrifice to God and that in that she was taking it on and saying, I've got this. I may not be perfect at it, but I'm going to take care of it and I'm going to take care of the people that God has put into my hand. And so I believe it's it's an attitude and it's a position of thankfulness to God. It's a gratitude for what what God has given us. You see, the people in your world are gifts to you, whether your children or your friends or your family or your church small group or the people that God has surrounded you with. Those are people that you get to pour into. Those are people that you get to love on. Those are people that get to be a part of your life. And so when you take responsibility, responsibility of taking care of of the needs of them and the needs of your community and the needs of your church. Guess what happens? You get blessed because God sees that and he goes, I can I can pour out my blessings upon you. So don't stop doing that. This is pleasurable to God. This is something that brings a smile to God's face. Your responsibility in owning what it is he's put in your hand is a beautiful thing. I I love the parable. I love the parables because they talk about the end times. But in Matthew 25, he talks about the parable of the talent. And this, this master, he's leaving out of town. And so he gives his servants different types of talents and he gives to one five and to another two and to one to another one and in this story as he gives them they go out as the master is gone and the, the one of five invests and he gets a return for his five and so he now has ten and then one of two goes and invests and, and and gets two more back and so he has a return of a four and then that third one who had the one he was in a way cowardice with it he didn't want to lose the master's one talent so he dug a hole and he kept it in the ground when the master returned and he said what did you do while I was gone with the money I gave you they all began to tell him and the one with 10 he said well done good and faithful servant with the one with two he said well done you've you've multiplied and you've done good as he's talking and he's saying to the one that put his talent in the ground and did nothing with it we pick up in verse 24 and it says this then the servant with the one bag of silver said to the master I know that you were a harsh man and harvesting crops but you did not plant and gather crops that you did not cultivate so not only did this servant not produce, but then threw back on the master like it's your fault because you didn't do it the way that I think you should have done it. Be careful, people, because we cannot question how God does things. It is his job. Some plant, some reap the harvest, some produce it. So we all have our spots in life. And so in verse 25, it says, I was afraid that I would lose your money. And so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. So he didn't have a grateful attitude. He didn't take responsibility of what was put in his hand. And I think the Proverbs 31 understands this grateful attitude and takes on the ownership of what's in her hand and who she is to serve. Verse 26, it picks up and says, But the master replied, You wicked and you lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops and I didn't plant and gathered crops, I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit the money back into the bank? He kind of threw it back at him like, why weren't you smarter than me, supposedly? At least I could have got, you could have gotten some interest. At least you could have gotten some interest. Then he ordered, take the money from his servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. Verse 29, and to those who use it well, what they are given, even more will be given. And when you have an abundance, but from those who do nothing, even what is little they have will be taken away. Hold on. God has given you your family. God has given you your marriage. God has given you your home, your cars, those things that you steward. And I don't want it taken away, do you? I want God to see me as seeing it as a gift. And I want to steward that well in the hands of God. And I want it to be a pleasurable thing to God. Because listen to the harshness of what God is speaking. Now, he is talking about the end times and not producing. But I believe us serving our families is producing the kingdom of God in their hearts. And to all those that come to our homes and see the goodness of God in our lives. So verse 30 says... Now throw this useless servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I believe that God loves and honors a responsible person. When your yes is yes and you stick to it, God honors that. 
When your no is no and you stick to it, God honors that. That's what he says in the word of God. A woman who takes care of her home, she, when she had the children, when she took them into her home, whether you've adopted or you've taken on other children, when you have taken on a job and, and you've been given a task at hand at your work, or when you're a student and you've committed to be a student, you do that with everything in you. And when you do it and you are responsible in it, the power of God will come upon your life and it will be anointed and the hand of God will guide you and lead you and you will not be in harm's way, but you will be in the blessing of God and God will see your faithfulness. And just like that man with the 10 talents, he got more from the one who didn't produce. You will reap more. People won't understand it. They'll judge you for it. You will have all of that. They'll look at you as a mom and go look at her with her house together. Well, listen, who cares what they say? You get your stuff together. You be the woman of responsibility. You love your family, your husband, your children, the atmosphere. If you're a single woman, you serve the house of God as if they are your own family and you build the kingdom of God and God loves you so much. And so I want you to kind of ask yourself some questions after this, this time that we've talked in Proverbs 31. What are you over? What are your responsibilities? What are the, what are the things that God has put into your hand? whether you're single or married, what is that? And what is your relationship with your family? Are there things you need to clean up? Are there things that you need to get in order in your home? Are, are, there, are there maybe new priorities and things that you have gotten out of whack and you need to put them back into place? You see, God wants you to have some order in the home and you are the one that is the gatekeeper of your home. And so let's be gatekeepers. Let's be responsible women that God can call and look upon and be pleased with. And so I hope you got something from God today, but I don't wanna leave you alone. If you've been listening to this and you're going, wow, I want to be that woman of responsibility, but I don't really know God on a personal level. I don't have a relationship with him. You see, it is one thing to know Jesus Christ. It's another thing to have a relationship with Jesus. Christianity is not just what you've seen on TV or what people talk about. It's actually having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we get closer to God, we learn how to be more like him every day, just like this Proverbs 31 woman. And God is coming back for the church. We talked about that in this message. And he is going to come back and where will he find you? Will he find you that that servant who didn't produce anything, who has no fruit? Or will he find you favorable and pleasurable and want to pour out blessing upon you? Will he find you as his daughter of the king or his servant of the king? Or will he find you as one that says, I know who he is, but I never said yes to him? Well, today I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to God, yes to a relationship with him, yes to making him the Lord and Savior of your life. So this is how it's going to go. You don't get saved by just saying, yeah, I want that. You actually have to do something. You have to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. And then afterwards, you need to get connected to a local church. If you are here in the San Bernardino area, we want to invite you to join us. But otherwise, look for a beautiful local church that preaches the Bible and loves the Lord and get into a community of believers. And so this is what we're going to do. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me if you want to pray this prayer for the first time or if you're rededicating. Say, Dear Father God, I come before you. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would come into my heart, and that you'd be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for being gracious to me. Teach me your ways. Holy Spirit, fill me. Show me how to live as you need me to live here on this earth. Thank you, Father God, that today, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus, that my old man is gone and that I am now new. Today is the day that I am born again. Thank you, Father God, for loving me and for dying on the cross. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, go and join us at www.rockchurch.com and press the Get to Know God button. We will get you connected and we'll give you some information. We'll send you some information. Don't do life alone. Now that you're a Christian, there's so many amazing things for you. So we'd love to see you and get connected there. Well, girls, that's it for today. I will see you next time.